Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games, back with another cool arcade game video for you today. We have a really interesting game that we got in the shop. And we figured we would film a little video of it because this may be the only one that we ever get. It's a fairly rare little title. And uh, we're going to talk about it a little bit and then we're going to play it. So stay tuned. All right. Right here at the beginning of the video, before you stay tuned, give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film this for you. We didn't have to do that. We're getting nothing out of this. We're just trying to help you out. This is Nichibitsu's. Nichi, Nichibitsu's 1985 Mag Max arcade game. You never see this thing. But let's check it out. First of all, they did not make any dedicated Mag Maxes. It was only a kit. So the only way you could get it was you bought a box that had all the parts in it, and then you turned one of your existing games into this sucker, right? This particular one doesn't even have side art on it, so I don't know if they had any originally or not. If you scour the internet, you will find very few of these actually in a cabinet. You'll see some of the game boards um, that people have saved so that they can uh, uh, play them. But as far as one actually inside of a cabinet, hard to find. Okay. So whenever you bought the kit, it would have the game board that goes inside. It would have a new harness so that you can wire up the game board that goes inside. It would have a joystick, which fell apart on us, so we put a new one in it. It would have a few buttons, and of course the wiring harness for everything. It would have a piece of artwork here that you put on the control panel. I believe this is the original uh, MagMax control panel overlay. But uh, it was just a kind of generic look so that you could put it on any control panel. And uh, it would turn that game into MagMax. It would have a little bezel here. It says right up there, Nichibutsu. <laughs> Niche, N-I-C-H. That's got to be niche. Niche, Ib, I-B, Atsu. Niche, Batsu. It's probably Nikibutsu. Nikibutsu. I think I'm turning Japanese. And then it would come with this marquee that you could slide into your sweet cabinet that you had and turn it into a Mag Max title, right? Now, it may have had side art, too. I don't know. But ours doesn't have side art. So, why would an operator buy that? It's because the operators had this little problem. Every time a new game came out, the distributors wanted to sell you an entire freaking game that cost $2,000 or whatever. $1,500, $2,000. And some of them didn't make any money. So then you know what you had? You had a broke, or not maybe broke, or just doesn't earn game sitting there in the warehouse that you couldn't do anything with. So some of them didn't make any money at all. And they're just sitting around rotting. And you paid $2,000 for the damn thing, and it might have only made $600 and quarters back. You lost your butt on it, right? So just imagine. Now try to put yourself in their shoes. What would you do in that situation? You can't sell the thing because the only people that buy it are other operators and they all know the thing's a turd. And Not this game. I'm talking about a generic game that, we're not, that we don't have here, right? <laughs> this one's not a turd. This is actually a very cool game. But our hypothetical turd that only made $600 since they bought it new uh, is just sitting around and they can't even put it on location because it doesn't make any money anywhere. You can't sell it to another operator. I guess you could sell it to somebody for their home, but you'd still lose all kinds of money. They're not going to pay a bunch of money for a game that nobody really likes, right? So they had all of these games that were sitting around in the warehouse that weren't worth a damn. And then they had some that were old, and as bad as it sounds, even stuff like Donkey Kong was sitting around and it wasn't making as much money anymore. Remember, this is 1985 that this kit came out. Um... So you would have games sitting around that were good games even back in the day, but were no longer making money because the latest and the greatest was out and everybody wanted to play that instead of playing uh, the old ones. So, what's an operator to do? Well, the, the uh, smart distributors and game makers started designing these kits because then you could take your old game and you didn't have to pay for a new monitor 
You didn't have to pay for a new cabinet. You didn't have to pay for the control panel again. You didn't have to buy another coin door. You didn't have to buy all of this stuff that goes into making a game. You didn't even have to buy a power supply. You just took the stuff you already had and turned the cabinet into a completely new title. Okay? So this particular game, we're going to talk about some strange stuff. I'm going to show you some flyers and stuff. This particular game was not originally a Mag Max. Like I said, all of the Mag Maxes were kits. So you had to put it in something else. So if they would have put this in like, say, Miss Pac-Man, well, somebody along the way has probably turned it back into a Miss Pac-Man. People are real bad about doing that. If you find a game that's kitted and it's a fun game, just leave it alone. You don't have to turn everything back into what it originally was. But a lot of people do. So because of that, and because this is kind of a lesser known title and it's not super desirable, um, uh, all of the ones that were kitted in the cabinets, a lot of the cabinets have been kitted back into what they originally were. People have this neuroticism about that where they have to turn the thing back into what it originally was. They cannot leave good enough alone. Oh, Lord, it's the wrong game in the wrong cabinet. I've got to fix it even if it costs me $1,500 and a lot of, lot of time. i got to fix it, right? Um, so it's hard to find a weird game like this that's still in the wrong cabinet because they were all in the wrong cabinets. So a game like this is in real trouble of going extinct, right? Now, people still have the game boards like I mentioned, so they could, you know, theoretically put it in a cabinet that was just made for kits or something like that, but... This is one you won't see very often. Now, what game is this that it's in? Can you tell? What game was this originally? There are secrets giving it away. And all of you people that are really into arcade games, you already know. What game is that? Can you tell? Let me back up so you can see the whole thing. Let's get the whole view in. We're kind of tight in here right now. We're getting ready for Christmas. So we got crap everywhere. What cabinet is that? I'll give you a hint. It's a Gottlieb game. My favorite, Gottlieb. <laughs> that everybody gives me hell because I don't pronun pronunciate it right. So what old Gottlieb game is this, can you tell? So I'll give you the next clue. It still has the artwork around the monitor from the original game. Look at that. There's some in there too. Let me brighten it up so you can see it. Let me take you back to 1983. Check it out. Look, there's even artwork above the monitor on the flat part that you can't even see. See what I'm saying? So there's the monitor. Up there is his <laughs> artwork. Huh? 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 It is, or was, a Gottlieb Millstar Mach 3 arcade game. A Laserdisc arcade game. Yeah, that's right. A weird Laserdisc arcade game, but a kind of popular one. Everybody kind of remembers Mach 3. So that's a Mach 3 cabinet that's been turned in to a Mag Max. What? So let's go look at what a Mach 3 looked like. Okay, so here's the Mach 3 flyer. The laser game that breaks through the earnings barrier, backed by our dependable warranty. What do you think about that? They have a, they have a warranty on all the Mach 3's operators. So it's 1983. Okay. The speed of an F F15 fighter and the thrills of laser game realisms make, make realism makes Mach 3 a revolutionary new arcade experience. After selecting one of two exciting adventures, the bombing run or the fighter raid, you fly your jet through the air in search of enemy targets which are enhanced by your onboard computer. Attacking enemy aircraft and ground air missiles keep you on your guard at all times during your mission. The graphics are incredibly realistic. The action is fast and challenging and the game collects faster than the speed of sound. So they're saying it makes a bunch of money. See your Millstar distributor for the exciting details. Millstar, Milestar, was uh, Gottlieb's uh, arcade division at the time. Specifications, so there was a cockpit. 63 and a half inches high, 29 and a half inches wide, length 83 inches. 
upright 69 inches high. Ding, 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 that's ours. Width 24 and a half inches wide. Ding, 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 that's ours. And length 36 inches. Ding, 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 that's definitely ours. Okay. So then they had this cool little folder because uh, probably the thing wasn't making any money or wasn't selling, so they, <laughs> they went farther. Explosive exposure, enormous earnings. And so here we get our, our view of what it originally would have looked like in all its glory. Look how cool it must have been. Wow, man. Okay. Next page. What they're saying about Mach 3, this is what they're saying about it. Some will call it uh, Mile Stars, right? Mile Stars Mach 3 is the first game to overtake Dragon's Lair in earnings battles. It's the only one of the Laserdisc offerings that seems to be living up to its price tag. Play meter. Mach 3 is hot. The investment is paying dividends, averaging a gross intake of about $400 weekly in early December. That's Richard Way from Showbiz Pizza Place, Inc. By the way, people, all of these things where they tell you how much it makes weekly, they do this on every game. They tell you how much the game's making weekly. It was always nonsense. It's like they find the best location in the freaking world and how much it made on its best week, and then that's what they tell you the, the numbers are. You can't ever trust those, and none of the operators did. Mach 3 games are averaging $545 per week, surpassing early December. Weekly averages of $462 for Dragon's Lair. India Trend, I'm sorry, Inda Trend, Chuck E. Cheese Pizza Time Theaters. Folks are lining up from preteen to post geritol for a chance to empty their pockets down Mach 3's clattering gorge. <laughs> Kurt Supley with the Washington Post. Okay. The visuals for Mach 3 look like outtakes from the right stuff. The game breathes new life into the arcade business. Peter Ainsley, the village voice. Players are waiting in line to play Mach 3. Patrice O'Toole, the Alexandria Journal. And then here's another picture of the beautiful game itself. So you can see originally it would have had a flight stick. Two buttons on the right, two buttons on the left, which is still there on ours, but they've added two more buttons in here for the uh, for the fire button instead of having it on the, con the control panel. Okay. Next page. Mach 3. Week after week at street locations and arcades, it's no, it's no one. The National Video Newsletter, National Earning Averages, you can't make any of them out. Replay, Ops Decide Best Expo Games, Laser Games, Mach 3, Games People, Top 10. You can, yeah, you can see that it is, it's listed as number one on, uh, on that one, on the top 10. Yeah, it's listed as number one on the other one too, the National Video Newsletter. Play meter, play meter's equipment pole. Mach one, Mach three is listed as number one. Okay, so apparently it was getting rave reviews for a while there at least. Next page. Mach three blasts skyward in consumer media. 18.7 million television viewers across the country saw Mach three on Entertainment Tonight live from. Uh, the American Mu the Amusement Manufacturers of America, or something like that, AMOA, whatever it's whatever it means, in New Orleans. Uh, BBC, boy, this, you know, New Orleans, you can pronounce New Orleans or New Orleans. We have come across ten damn things I can't pronounce right in this video so far. BBC television special spotlights the making of Mach 3. Mach 3 covered by all three television network affiliates at AMOA. Mach 3 featured on PM Magazine in more than 87 U.S. television markets. USA Today, the Chicago Tribune, um, you know, all of the games were made in Chicago, too. The El Paso Times, ABC, NBC, CBS, Time Magazine. So, apparently, it was something when it came out. I wish, it, I wish we still had it. I'd love to play it, but, you know. Playing the new game on the block, the Alexandria Journal, the Baton Rouge Morning Advocate, the Suburban Sun-Times... says, no, the video disc hasn't died and gone back to Japan. 
Just give it a chance and it will do a lot more than play Jaws. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> that didn't work out. And in trade media, so it's Cashbox Magazine, Play Meter, Play Meter. Apparently it was on the cover of Play Meter. Okay. So, from what I understand, the thing was not reliable at all. From what I understand, they broke a lot, right? So, it, it didn't it didn't quite make it, people. So, apparently the operators ended up with a bunch of Mach 3s that were broke, and then they started turning them into other games. So, they turned it into this one. <laughs> so, we've got the, the, the carcass of one that was kitted. Let's go back and look at it, read the instructions. Okay, so it is now a Mag Max, right? Now you could turn it back, but it would cost you a lot of money. You're going to have to get a working laser disc player, and then you're going to have to get the working laser disc. I think there are other options now, though, um, but they're they're not cheap. Six, seven, eight hundred bucks probably just for that part, right? And then you have to get the game board that actually plays it because the laser disc does not play the game; it just stores the images, right? So you have to get the game board that plays it. Pretty freaking rare. Um, and all this stuff has to be working or tested working or you have to fix it. And it's all unique one-off stuff, uh, you know. Um, and then you need all of the artwork for the sides, uh, the marquee, the control panel, and you need the weird joystick. So the monitor's probably still the same. So you're looking at... It's probably going to cost you $1,000 to turn it back into a Mach 3. Maybe more if I'm low. It, 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 it may be that the game board is very expensive. and that The game board itself might be $1,000 if it's, if it's as hard to find as some of them. Okay, so you can see where the original two buttons were on the left and two were on the right. They have added in these two buttons to make a fire button. And these two over here are the start buttons. Okay, so let's read the instructions on the new game, what it is now. How to play instructions. Form a powerful Mag Max robot by joining with head and leg units. Firepower is increased with each unit added. With head jointed to Max Craft, pick up Red Plasma Gun, which enables Max to dest destroy enemies in succession. Warp between ground level and underground using the transporter. Bonus points for destroying enemies formed in one line while flashing red. 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. Shoot down the stragomites to destroy enemies. Okay. Beware of the underground volcanoes. So, apparently the operator thought this one was going to be a big deal. Now, remember how I was saying all of the games... There are always things saying, oh, this, this is the greatest game of all time. And I was just reading you the one of Mach 3 from 1983, right? Well, let's go look the flyer of Mag Max. All right, so here is the flyer art, and it says, An industry-first 16-bit CPU, 68,000-based conversion kit game. That's the processor, of course, that it was running. Defeat the heavy metal attack, Mag Max. Transform into Mighty Robot, Mag Max. Use Red Plasma Weapon for ultimate power, Mag Max. Transport to Underground and back in search of mysterious Dragonia, Mag Max. Right? So there's the three-headed three uh, dragon that you fight that's made out of metal. I can't quite read it. Highly evolved aliens defeated civilization. They reign over Earth with the mighty metallic Dragonia fleet. Now, notice none of this was mentioned on the uh, on the uh, <laughs> the bezel. Maybe it changed over times. But man fights back bravely using a secret, de a secretly developed transforming robot, Mag Max. One rebel pilot is chosen to rescue the remaining people. Now it launches from the underground rebel base. And races to attack the Jetta Point. The final battle begins. Okay, and then look on the back of the flyer. Here's all you need to know about Mag Max. Oh, what is this? More shills. 
I am into my fourth month with Mag Max at the same location, and collections still haven't dropped below $160 a week. My second Mag Max is also doing around $150 a week and shows no sign of slowing down. Harry Beamer, Anchor Vending, Long Island, New York. Now, you might notice that the numbers are a lot lower. Well, this is they're trying to be more realistic because by this time they had burnt everybody by saying, oh, it's making $500 a week on all the games, right? So they're trying to, they know nobody's even going to believe that crap anymore. So they're getting these guys who are people that you can call on the phone. Like you could call that guy if you wanted to. If you're in the business, you just call him up and say, hey, is that true? And he'd say, sure it is. Um, and then also this was in 1985. So the, the, the video game market had crashed. The arcade, the arcade industry had crashed. Um, and part of it was because operators wouldn't buy new games because they were, they put out so much crap in like 83 and 84 that, uh, they got burnt on them and they wanted kit games. And so there weren't all that many kits. And so now the companies were making kits like Mag Max and people were buying them. So all the numbers had changed. Um, and all of these numbers might be nonsense anyways. Let's, I like this one. Bruce Smith. We only operate first-rate games, brother. Paperboy, Commando, 1942, and the top Konami pieces. And Mag Max competes right up there with the rest of them. So that's Bruce Smith from Fun Attic Amusement in Springfield, Missouri. Okay, moving on. In both our street locations and in our arcade, Mag Max has exceeded all of our expectations. Murray Straussberg, Cam Vending out of Los Angeles, California. I am delighted with this kit. The play graphics are outstanding. Now you saw them, people. Those play graphics were outstanding, weren't they? The play graphics are outstanding. The kit puts together easily, and best of all, it takes great money. I mean, yeah, it says it takes great money. I guess he's saying, you know, take it from the kids. Jim Metter, New Fangle Fun Company, Fresno, California. Let me tell you a little secret. In 1985, I lived in Fresno, California. I don't remember seeing a Mag Max out. <laughs> Maybe I didn't go in the New Fangled Fun Company. I, I should have found them in some of the things. When I was that age, though, I didn't even know about our game. <laughs> I, didn't, I need to call Jim up, see if he's still around. Hey, Jim, I lived in Fresno in 1985, and I don't remember seeing his game. I think maybe you was uh, shilling, Jim. You might have been a shill. Okay, next one. Mag Max has taken over $150 a week and has exceptional graphics. Now, it does look like the graphics are pretty good for 1985. We're going to find out. I believe it will have longevity. One of the easiest and best-looking conversions I have ever seen. Well worth the money. I think it does look pretty good as a conversion, too, and we don't even have the side art on it. But like in that cabinet, it looks pretty good, really. The, the, the marquee looks good. The control panel's got nice little colors on it. I mean, you know, it is what it is. So that's Ken Anderson, A&B Vending, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Okay, and so then here they list Play Meter, which was kind of the industry's uh, magazine. Top 10 games of October 1st issue, Play Meter magazine. Uh, number one is Demolition Derby by Bally Midway, which has a rating of 183, which is significantly higher than the rating of 156, which Mag Max has. Um, and then Super Punch Out, Commando, Paperboy, Cheyenne, Hogan's Alley, 1942, Kung Fu Master, and Space Shuttle, uh, the pinball. Now, uh, you can't really go by any of this, though, because we don't know when any of them were released. So if Super Punch Out was two years old by then and was still hanging, uh, you know... And then Super Punch Out is a much better game than Mag Max, but who knows, you know? And then also, look at what's going on here. Commando was a full game. That was I've actually done a video of that on here. Commando was an entire cabinet. Demolition Derby was an entire cabinet. Super Punch Out was a kit, but it was a kit only for Nintendo's Punch Out cabinet because you needed two monitors. So it was a kit, but you know. So Commando was a full game. Paperboy. Was a kit, believe it or not, but it only went in the uh, system, the Atari System uh, One cabinets that were, uh, I guess it's System One that were like Championship Sprint. If you look into all that, Paperboy came out later. Um, I might have that backwards. I don't think I do though. But it it was technically a kit, but it only could fit in Atari cabinets. 
Cheyenne by Exidy again. I think was technically a kit. I think it. I think it kitted into Exidy cabinets. I might have that wrong. I've never had any of those. They're rare as hell. Hogan's Alley was in fact a kit. It was a Nintendo versus uh, game. Uh, you know, we did a red tent cocktail earlier a few weeks ago. Um, Hogan's Alley could be kitted into a red tent Nintendo versus cocktail. You could play that. Uh, on the cocktail, believe it or not. Boy, it doesn't like me staring at this too long. Uh, 1942. Uh, there was a dedicated one. I, I believe there was also a kit of that, though. Kung Fu Master was definitely a kit. And Space Shuttle was the pinball that um, people have credited with saving the pinball business. So apparently, notice out of the ten, it's the only pinball uh, ranking. So th this usually was based on... I don't know how they did their index, but it basically was what the hell is earning, you know. I guess probably compared to what it costs, right? But you can see that several of them were kits. So that was kind of the way the industry was going in 1985. So we're going to play this uh, MagMax kit. But I've got one more thing to show you before we do that. Check this out. By the time this game came out, we had gotten well into the age of the Nintendo Entertainment System. So here in our store, for a while now, we have had this copy of the Nintendo version of it. It's still sealed. 50 bucks. That ain't too bad, is it? Somebody cut off the price tag of it, though. I don't know why that is. FCI. I don't know who that is. And it says that it's an arcade classic, people. So this is a classic arcade game, in case you didn't know, and it's got that sweet art from the flyer on it. And look at this, it's got the Nintendo quality assurance. Nintendo has evaluated and improved the quality of this, of this product. Now, you know, Nintendo wouldn't just do that for everybody, people. <laughs> right? 90 day warranty. It's pretty cool. By the way, if you get a game that was never open, what's that kind of tell you about the game? I mean, I'm not getting good vibes from this, but we're going to try it. Now, let's see if the story has changed by now. It is now 1988. Right? <laughs> That's a three years have passed. It's up to you to save the human race by transforming mechanical parts into the ultimate robot warrior, Mag Max. On land, on sea, and in outer space, you shoot deadly lasers from your beam gun to fight off the forces of the three-headed mechanical monster of Babylon. Babylon. <laughs> Where'd that come from? If you survive the undersea volcano, you come face to face with Babylon in the final battle of the giant space robots. War Paul takes you over and under the ground. I don't remember that being mentioned before. Black bullets and rock icicles earn bonus points. I heard they were called the Stragomites. Four different screen patterns. Over 30 different enemy obstacles to overcome. State-of-the-art graphics and sound effects. One or two players. It is a top 20 arcade classic, apparently. And it was made by FCI and Pony Canyon. Which is Fujisanki Communications International, Inc. And Mag Max is a trademark of Nihon Busan Company. Maybe known in the, in the United States as... Nikabutsu. All right, so I'm going to go get the tripod and we'll finally play it. It's almost too easy. Look, they lay the parts out right in front of you. Now, for all the younger people, see how it says game over, insert coin? Yeah, you used to have to pay to play them. Oh, look, he blew his legs off. I'll let you continue to watch the attract mode there.
All right, so I ordered our food and it got here. <laughs> so now we got to play. Let's try this sucker out. What do you think? Can I turn it up? There will be no turning it up, people. Apparently it's on the game board. All right, let's try it out. Got me. <laughs> Damn it. I only have one Mag Max left, people. I haven't even got to his legs yet. Oh no, oh no! Oh, yeah! Ow! Hmm! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Again. <laughs> oh no, man. Mm. All right, we're going to try it again. Two left, game start. Oh, you gotta start over every time. Or I didn't even get past the first level, so it wouldn't let me continue. One or the other. Maybe if I hang at the back of the screen, it'll be better for me. What do you think? Oh yeah! I finally am my final form. Oh, he moves different. He's slower. I think he's slower when he's his entire form. I sense a boss coming up, or maybe not. Let's see if you can tell if he's slower. Yeah, he's definitely slower. One more time. We'll try it one more time. I must have got an extra man. I thought that was my last one before. 
Hmm. I was getting so close. One more again. All right, so I did pretty good hanging back. Don't go high in that part, people. Damn. <laughs> challenging, challenging game. I'm not gonna go low. Let's see what happens up high if I don't go down low. me down. Well, there you go, people. That's a little bit of gameplay of it. But I thought the story of it was a little bit uh, more fun than the actual gameplay. <laughs> I've never played the Nintendo version. I don't know if it's the same, and I don't want to open up that brand new one. That'd be stupid, wouldn't it? A good way to turn a $50 game into a $5 game. So leave your comments below. Let us know what you think about it. Did you remember? Have you ever played this in the arcade? My, my thinking is that it's probably pretty rare in the arcade. Or did you ever play the Nintendo version? Let us know what you think. Oh, man. I was going for them. And we'd like to thank everybody that has been using our Amazon links. If you don't know about that, we have a link to Amazon down below. If you're going to buy anything, oh, it wouldn't let me get it because I don't have arms. If you're going to buy any, mm, if you're going to buy anything on Amazon, if you click our link first, it takes you to uh, Amazon, just like normal, except we get a royalty from it so thank you to everybody that's been doing that people have been really buying a bunch of stuff lately i guess because it's almost christmas so thank you to everybody that's been doing that and also check out our brother channel my brother donnie well i'm playing i play better when i'm talking check out our brother channel my brother donnie uh i'm over there with him usually uh we're always getting into some kind of tro tro trouble over there but it doesn't have anything to do with arcade games or pinball machines so make sure to check that out give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you and uh we'll see you on the next game hope you enjoyed it